So the day will come when all of your children will be able to say and not apologize for where they came from, who they are, or what they've done. But they will all be able to say, in pride, I'm black and I'm proud. I'm brown and I'm sound. I'm red, but I ain't dead. I'm yellow and I'm mellow. I'm white and I'm all right. Thank you, God, that we can live on and say, I thank you that I'm a woman, but I'm wise. I'm gay, but I'm godly. I'm straight, but I'm sensible. I'm an immigrant, but I'm industrious. Thank you, O oh God. James 5.16 says the effective, fervent prayer of the righteous man avails much. It has much power. When righteous people pray, they are connected with God through his will, through his word, and it has much power. It has the ability to produce. Well, what happens when a man that may not be righteous prays? What happens to their prayer? You can tell when a man is praying from their emotions and not praying according to the will of God. The latest example is Amos Brown. You may not know Amos Brown, but he is Kamala Harris's pastor. Yeah, he is Kamala Harris's pastor. He is one of these church plants. He's a social justice pastor. He's a churchianity pastor. He's a pastor that values the blackness of someone over the word of God. And this man was at New Birth on Sunday. I didn't see this before. He gave the opening prayer for service at New Birth. This is the first time I've heard these kinds of things prayed for in church. I first want to ask every man and boy to stand up. Let us pray, oh God. First, we want to thank you for last night's slump and sleep. We thank you that you woke us up this morning. As old deacon would say, and sent us on our way. And God, we want to thank you for the men of old who were heroes and stood up for the race so that we could say, God of our weary years, God of our silent tears, Thou who has brought us thus far along the way. We thank you, O oh God, that we didn't come just because of your grace. But we thank you also for the sacrifice of Reverend George Washington Lee, who gave up his life on May the 7th. 1955 because he would not take his name off of the voting list in Humphreys County, Mississippi. And that's why I called them church plants because they use the atrocities of the past to justify victimization and oppression today. I appreciate everything that the civil rights generation did for us as Americans and as particular black people. I really do. My mom's a part of that generation, and I really, really appreciate what they did. But there are some things that they have created in the black community that they allowed to happen in the black community that we're feeling the repercussions of today.
namely the destruction of the black family, namely the partnering with the Democratic Party to turn black churches into church plants to do the will of the Democratic Party in the black community. Because what that has done, that has turned the community on its head. Instead of standing up for true biblical values, instead of standing up for American values, instead of standing up for the family, instead of standing up for our children, instead we have preachers like this who constantly preach that black people are still struggling. When will the struggle end? That's my question. When will the struggle end? Because if I read my Bible, it says stand fast in the liberty whereas Christ has made you free. It says that we're no longer slaves to sin. It says that we are more than conquerors through Christ. So where does the mentality of a victim come from? It comes from the Marxists and the communists and the socialists that want to use the atrocities of black people to further their aim of revolution in America. That's where it comes from. And they've used the black church to accomplish that. Their little experiment in the black community has led to so much heartache and destruction. But yet, instead of people in the pulpit preaching the truth of the gospel, they preach this other gospel, this false gospel that leads to more destruction and dysfunction in a community. Now, God... We pray that you would speak to every black male and have them to know that he spits on their graves when he refuses to vote. I had a feeling he was going to say something like that when he asked all the black men to stand up. Man, this shaming of black men by these preachers, these church plant pastors, these church Negroes, these folks that practice churchianity must stop. It really must stop. Why is it that black men, black men have felt the brunt of the societal attacks for so long, for so long, unwarranted, unwarranted. And it, it is so disgusting to me how people want to place the blame of whether or not Kamala Harris is elected at the feet of black men. Why are these people always chastising black men? Seriously. Why is he chastising these black men who are at church? Do you really think that's going to push them to vote for Kamala Harris? Most of these black men are going to new birth, unfortunately, probably simps anyway. They're going to vote for Kamala Harris because of all the pressure they feel. So why is he doing that? It's so frustrating. It really is so frustrating. All the attacks that constantly happen, all the insults, all the pressure, all the insinuation all of the hatred that is pushed towards black men because they think for themselves it is really really annoying and that's not pleasing to god it's not how about you pray that the man how about you be thankful that in america black men can vote can express their own opinion speak to every black male that he will know that we must trample not trample on the graves of those who gave up their lives for the right to vote. Thank you, O oh God, for this day that we pray for our member and thy servant, Kamala Harris. O oh God, may she know that as she moves around this nation, you will guide her, you will protect her, and she will be able to say, I will make the darkness light before thee and what is wrong i know you're making right before me and all my battles i will fight before thee and the high places you will bring down oh god bless my president to be in this nation that will bring about a light in dark places now god we pray for America, this United States of America, that will look at itself and look in the mirror and see that there's too much hate, too much division, too much hypocrisy, too much laziness. Oh God, fire us up, wake us up, put fire in our bellies that we will get ready to vote on the 5th of November. We thank him for those who've already voted. We thank him 
for Jimmy Carter, who showed us the way to not even make an excuse. If I'm sick, I'm still going to vote. Thank you, oh God, that we will make it a our business to be good citizens so the day will come when all of your children will be able to say and not apologize for where they came from, who they are, or what they've done. But they will all be able to say, in pride, I'm black and I'm proud. I'm brown and I'm sound. I'm red, but I ain't dead. I'm yellow and I'm mellow. I'm white and I'm all right. Thank you, God, that we can live on and say I thank you that I'm a woman, but I'm wise. I'm gay, but I'm godly. I'm straight, but I'm sensible. I'm an immigrant, but I'm industrious. Thank you, oh God. Thank you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And for his sake, amen. I think most of those people probably tuned out two minutes into the prayer. I know I would have. That was horrible. That was not a prayer of faith. That was a prayer of a social justice church plant pastor. I'm gay, but I'm godly. You can't be gay and godly. I'm an immigrant, but I'm industrious. And that is the state of the black church in America. That is the black church in America. Full of churchianity and a church plant, a para ministry of the Democratic Party. We're not victims. We are empowered for greatness.